great nights of encounter. Two keys to your success. Two opportunities to change your life. What the Lord told me to speak with you, or share with you, is this. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Join Apostle Alfred Williams at the historic CFT Cathedral Woolwich for Overcomers Night. Every last Friday of every month, come and receive your miracle, your freedom, your blessing at this night of power. And then on the first, second, and third day of every month, Victory Night, come see an experience that with God, all things are possible. Come and encounter God's transforming power through prayer. Begin your month with prayer that brings signs and wonders. Operation Push. Pray until something happens. Come and receive the keys to your success at Overcomers Night and Victory Night. CFT Cathedral Woolwich, SE14 5BD. Visit cftchurches.org now. I want to make a name for God and God supported him and gave him success. So this is where the thought went wrong. They want to make name for themselves, not for God. Number one. Second reason why their thought went wrong, and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Two things they committed. One, they don't want to give glory. They want to say that, I got it. We did it. Anything that exalts self, man, God hates it. He destroys it at the onset of thoughts. God has a plan to make sure it fails. God has a plan to make sure that they are disgraced. Somebody said, God bless me so that I will show them too that I am my God. God will make sure you don't have that blessing. Because your blessing, when you're reading that, you know, I've been looking at that when we look at love. If you say, God bless me so that I can help the poor, then you are in line with God. God bless me so that, you know, the church have been talking about projects in India, projects in uh, in Afghanistan. I stole all of you. You know, Lebanon had a a catastrophe. It is a disgrace that the whole church of God on earth, no church with all the trillions of dollars they have in their account, no church have been mentioned to go to Lebanon to go and help the poor people there in Lebanon. And they lock up trillions in their accounts across the globe, lavishing and squandering them. They will leave them one day and stand before the one who owns the whole world. Now, let me tell you, if when I said that, your heart is that, oh God, look at what the apostle has said, bless me so that I can be available. Instantly, God will all know it. Your mindset is very important to God. And the root of your thoughts must not be contrary to God's will. You are not living on earth to show anybody anything. Anything you acquire, understand. There are people who have more than that and they didn't speak. So when you acquire good things from God and God blesses you, it's nothing to show anybody. Really, the Bible tells us that the more he blesses you, the more humble you should become. Do you not read that? It's not for you to begin to pour for yourself and distinct yourself from some other people. You are not different from them. I will get there now. So thought is good, but out of the heart comes all good thoughts and all evil thoughts. And they will happen according to what you permit. And then he says here, two things here. One, they want to build name for themselves. And two, they don't want to scatter. Why is it that this be scattered over the face of the earth? You know, we don't want to scatter. Why is it a sin? Look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let me look at, let me show you the reason why God, the thoughts of God for creating mankind. He says, 26, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them what? Rule over the fish of the seas and over the birds of the air, over livestock and over all where? And these people don't want to go to all the earth. They want to remain. Let's build the city so that we won't scatter. Whereas God intended to create man and scatter them so that they can rule. And look at what he says in the next verse. So God created man in his image, his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, created ye them, stop. I will talk about this because I need to. There are some ignorance in the church of God who preach classism and they said that the man, man is superior to woman. They are of the devil. If any Christian say that man is superior to a woman, that Christian, Satan entered him. Here, my Bible tells me that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male 
and female created ye them. So a man and a woman, a woman is not a less image, and a man is not a more image of God. We are equal, but we have different function. In your office, your MD is not a more human being than you. You are both human beings, but you have different functions. Are we together now? So, and those people who believe that women should not talk in church, they should not have sucked their mother's breast. And when their mother was singing for them when they were young babies and when they are crying, they shouldn't have listened because their mother is a woman. They should not have listened to their mother's instruction and commands because she's a woman. That is nonsense from the pit of hell. God is all wise. He created the first woman out of a man, but he brought forth man from woman. That's what Paul says, and it's correct. Correct? Good. COVID does not want you to shout, but you can nod your head when I ask question. <laughs> Amen. Until the era of COVID will soon be over in October. You didn't say amen. Did you not hear that God answered that prayer in England? For the past 24 hours, only three people died. It's on the news. It's on the news. We prayed it. That, Lord, we don't want anyone to die. Take the power of death from COVID. And he did it in England. We watch over the boundaries of this country. We will pray COVID out of our nation. Yes. That is what I call real Christianity. Not rebelling against the instruction of governments on social distancing in church. And if the church has to be shut down, the building has to be shut down, it is of God. We will shut it down. Because church is not this building. This building is Gala Bingo. That's what it was. When we bought it, it became Christ with Tabernacle Church. Church is you and I. We must not be ignorant. Okay, I'm finishing now. I think five minutes. <clears throat> Are you enjoying what we're looking at? We're looking at the reason why God frustrated the council of Babel, Tower of Babel. So he says here, God created them male and female. God blessed them and said, what? Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, underline that, and subdue it. Then go back to my Genesis 11. God said, fill the earth and subdue it. And let's see verse 4 again. He says, then they said, come, let us make ourselves a city, build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that they may make name for, we will make name for ourselves and not scatter. And then, well, which is contrary to God's instruction, the fundamental basis of God creating man is to fill the earth. And they decided to truncate that and not scatter. How can they fill the earth if they are not scattered? So now let's look at what happened then. The one who appointed them, the governor, came. But the Lord came down. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord came down to observe, to see the city and the tower, the man we are building. <laughs> Whenever he thought it generated, God oversees it. He looks at it to look at whether that thought is in line with him. Any thought that is in line with him, he empowers it. Any thought that is not in line for a child of God, he frustrated. Even for the world, he, he does frustrate it. <clears throat> he frustrates it. And many Christians have been frustrated by God and they are binding demons. Oh, the demon of my father's house and some other naive, in quotes, prophets who are not really called by God. We begin to tell them that there is a witch in your mother's house. There is a woman that is short. She's robust. Yes, 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 yes. It is my mother, Milady. Oh, yes, 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 damn it, lady, damn it, lady, damn it, lady. Yes, 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 yes. And they tell you that you need prayer, so if any prophet tells you you need prayer, you know what you need to tell them? Sir, do you need prayer yourself? That is not from God to tell somebody you need prayer to overcome the devil. No, you don't need that. What you need to overcome the devil, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. That's what you need to overcome the devil. Resist the devil and he shall flee. Nor pray ye the devil. Wrong medication. You see Satan, you are going to pray. Before you finish your prayer, he has destroyed you and gone. If you are the one who always pray when Satan comes, Satan will easily get you because he will, he will wait for you. He knows that when he strikes, you will go and pray. Before you finish your prayer, he has done what he has done and he has gone. 
A believer prays regularly because it's your relationship with your father. Communication with heaven, you do it regularly. In CFT, I've given you a template. Three times a day, nine in the morning, 12 and three. They have hours of prayer. Watch, watch time from six to nine, nine to 12, nine to 12, 12 to three and three to six. Four watches of Hebrew. Get up in one of it and pray. A, a person who follows what I teach will not miss Satan and begin to wonder. You will be like Elijah who said, I had enough of you, devil. I said, there shall be no dew or rain except by my word. And then God said, because you said so, heaven back it up. That is what you will become. That's what you must become. That's what you are. We are not people who are microwave prayer people. Walk in the light and you will never stumble. Walk in darkness, you will always stumble and fall and fall, stumble and fall. Prayer will not change your darkness to light, but change of your mind. Set back to where God says. Christianity is the easiest. God is the easiest to serve. But a man who will serve God will conquer man and conquer flesh. Tonight you are going to look at the influence of flesh and stuff in your lecture. God looked down and then he said, that's a dictum. Verse 6, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. When your heart and mind is united, whatever you decide as a thought cannot be frustrated by anything. You will execute it because God made you in his own image. When God thought in his mind in verse 26 of chapter 1 of Genesis, let us make man in our image, he came out of the thought of God. Nothing can stop God. And then God created someone like himself too. Who can make a thought and make it happen? It's called the image of God. And put his likeness in him so that he has all the abilities of God too. Now you will understand that men fell, but God raised you and I up back and restored us back to the original man. And the Spirit of God lives in us. I help you know yesterday the difference between you and Elijah. Elijah who, who called fire, fire from heaven and then ran before a woman. Why you cannot do that? Because Holy Ghost lives inside you. Come on. The time has come for the church of God to look inward them and stop gauging yourself by your depraved flesh for which Jesus came and died. If Jesus paid the price for my flesh, then my flesh has no superiority over my spirit. The spirit in your spirit is the spirit of the living God. And so you and I must just let the spirit take over our spirit. And then we can control our flesh. We can control all we see and what we do. Then we can speak like God and it shall be. Not going to fast for 40 days looking for what is not lost. Like some do. Instead of repenting and, and, and following the precepts of God. God will come when language and speech are the same. Come on before we close here now. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Satan doesn't want you and I to know who we are. What the word of God stands for is to reveal the true God and the true you. Okay? When you understand the true God, you will understand the true you. That's why Satan make it impossible for many Christians to read the Bible by themselves. So that they don't know God at all. Because you look at the perfect law of God, you then see yourself in the mirror. That scripture tells me, oh, one people speaking the same language. I end up by telling you this. From where does your speech come? From your mind. What you process in your mind is what you say. Where is the seat of your language? Your heart. That's the reason why a person can speak ten languages. And when you're speaking, if you have French, German, uh, Spanish, English, uh, Shanti, Fanti, Yoruba, Hausa, Ibu, and the person can speak all the languages. If the English asks in English, he will not answer him with the language of the Fante from Ghana or the Swahili from South Africa. He knows in his heart, this is English man, and from his heart, stored in his heart, he answers him. And the other person over there asking his dialect, he turns to him from his heart. He answers him. But what is in his heart cannot come to his mouth without his mind processing it. So anywhere the heart 
and the mind of a person is united, whatever that heart and mind is united for will be done, whether evil or good. Are we in agreement? You're unstoppable. So also in a marriage, when the heart and mind of a husband and wife are the same, in the heart of husband and wife is love. But their mind process some strange stuff sometimes. Because their mind is subject to what they see. And Satan can easily deceive the mind of man by showing you a mirage, shadow, and you chase it for 40 years thinking it's the object. It is only in God, the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 16, that you can prevail against the mind of flesh which you were born with. But when heart and mind are the same, in a family, no external force, whether man or spirit, can stop that family in achieving what they want to do. But both of them are speaking the same language in their lips. And when the language comes out, and it seems as if the other did not understand, the one who spoke the coded language needs to decode his language rather than being proud and be saying that I said it. If you said it, you said nonsense. Reprogram yourself and let the person know that what you think is not what I'm saying or what you think is what I'm saying, but you didn't get it. It is like somebody who came from Africa to work in England. Mommy worked with her. And the person said to the person who came from Africa, don't be silly, lad, darling. And he said, me silly? Are you calling me silly? You are calling me silly. Eh? Because in Africa to tell an older person don't be silly is an insult. And the guy, the lady laughed and said, oh, come on, come on, don't be silly. You are calling me silly. <laughs> but you know, you can't do anything than to just shout. After some time, the one who came from Africa recognized that don't be silly is not an insult in England. He's just telling you to behave yourself. <laughs> it's just, you know, yeah. it's like just said, do you really mean it? Oh, why are you doing that? Don't be silly is the language. From the mind of the speaker, he's just chatting. So the ear of the hearer, what an insult. How many times has that caused trouble between husband and wife? How many times? Instead of the other one saying, are you abusing me? And the other one says, that, oh, no, 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 I'm not abusing you. But why did you say this? Oh, if you saw it as an abuse, I'm, I'm sorry, that's not what I mean. And then the fire is quenched. The other one too, he said, you said language and the, your partner said that, why did you say that? You know, I felt insulted, I said, ah, if you, if you take that as insult, then take it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, if you say take it, he will take it. But whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap it. And when you sow a seed, when you reap, you reap in abundance because you are reaping fruit. The seed will have become a tree and germinated and grow. And you cannot decide not to harvest your own crop. Your heart and mind <laughs> must be united. Wherever the heart and mind is united, God sees. But in this case, God came down and destroyed their language. Okay? It says, God said whatever they decide to do, they can do. So God came. Let us go down and confuse their language. Because God wanted them to spread, and they don't want to spread. And if God did not destroy that language, confuse the language, they will not spread. And they will, they will, yeah, they will not spread. They will remain there. So, I conclude by saying that for you, anytime your thoughts is not in line with God, no wonder God frustrated them. The thought of an arrogant must not succeed before God. Because if it does succeed, that arrogant will end up in hell. And it's better for some Christians to be poor and enter heaven before God than for God to make, give them money or wealth. Because God knows that they are going to abuse it. And they're going to punish many people. They are going to, you know, make people regret that. Is he a human being that God blessed like this? 
the way they're going to use the wealth. And so a person like that may have every ability to succeed. God will just give him daily bread. You need to know this. Your thought, your heart is the bedrock of your thoughts. All right. Now, before I pray with you, I always refer to this. Always look at the book of Proverbs 4, 20, 23 to 27. In every lecture, I will refer to it. It says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put every perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Verse 26, make level path for your feet. Take only ways that are firm. Do not swear to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. So guard your heart is the wellspring of life. Let's bow our heads and pray. Our God and King, we thank you so much for your grace and mercy. I pray for everyone under my voice that the word that you have spoken, let it bring healing to our hearts. Let it restore our mindsets. Enable us, O oh God, to think in line with you. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, in chapter 2, verse 9, it says, No eye has seen, no ears have heard, no mind has conceived what you have prepared for those who love you. But God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit of God searches all things, even the deep things of God. Father, therefore, sanctify our mind that we may accept the deep things of God. Deliver our mind from our flesh so that our flesh and human mind will not rule over our spirit and our heart any longer. Let our heart be full of resources from heaven that we may be useful to your glory. This we ask in Jesus' holy name. I pray for this week, for, this, for your sins. In this new week that you are going, the light of God will dawn along your path. May the God of Jacob, may he be with you. May the God who promised Abraham, may he fulfill his promise over you. May the Lord strengthen you in everything that you do. Yes, Lord. May you be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearer than you have ever. And may you prosper in everything that you endeavor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up on your feet and stretch your hands forward. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you to stand up. Because I want to speak blessing upon you. I want you to close your eyes as you stretch your hands forward before the Lord. Father, I stand in Christ in God, and in accordance to your instruction, I do obey. I say to your people all over the world who hear my voice, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help in this week from his sanctuary. May he grant you support this week from Zion. May he remember all your giving, offerings, and your tithing, and your giving to the poor. May he remember all your commitment to the house of the Lord, your service to humanity. May the Lord accept your bond offering in your hand. And may the Lord give you the desires of your heart. And may the Lord make all your plans succeed in this week. Resources will come for you to fulfill destiny. Favor will rest upon you. The job that you have been seeking for will seek for you. God will send his angels concerning you to fulfill the covenant he had made with the righteous over you. In the spiritual, you will grow deeper and you will grow wider. You will grow taller in the realm of the spirit. Filled with the spirit and the power of the most high. And before the end of this week, I say every day of this week, you will have a cause to shout for joy. You shall be victorious in every battle. You will lift up the banner in the name of the Lord of hosts. And may the God of Abraham, who revealed himself to Abraham and promised him, the one who revealed himself to Isaac and confirmed the covenant, and the one who fulfilled the covenant and appeared even to Jacob in Bethel, the God of Bethel who fulfilled the covenant of Abraham in us who believe in Jesus. May he look into all the requests of your life. May he open the book of remembrance concerning you. May he help you in all your weaknesses. May he turn your weakness to strength. May he bless you according to his handwriting. 
It is written, the Lord Almighty has sworn surely as I plan, it shall be. Every plan before you, contrary to the plan of God, I overthrow in the name of Jesus. I say in this new week, you will fulfill. Every step you take will fulfill the plans of God. You are connected and wired with the Holy Spirit of God. And he will direct your path and thoughts in the name of Jesus. Right? May he grant all the requests of your heart. And when we come next Sunday, your mouth shall be filled with laughter and your tongue with songs of praise. This I ask and thank you, Father, is done as we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Please, let's be seated together. Behold, I am coming soon. Between the years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want you to understand that the first war was in heaven. The first victory was in heaven. And it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine, and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ, a final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win every house for Jesus. For more information, call 020 7635 0447 or visit cftchurches.org. The time has come to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon.